it's the most exciting thing you can do in life. <laughs> a little scary at times, but it's rewarding. But there's something about flying down the road, you know, in a fire truck that kids dream of, and it's, it's all true. I loved being a firefighter. It's great satisfaction when you, when you help people in their greatest times of need. So this is a scrapbook that uh, my children had put together for me. Uh, the local paper did a story on people working through the holidays, leaving our families at home. This is a photograph of a fire at Clay Street. The kids were little and I'm, you know, praying it's going to be a quiet night. I go to sleep and, you know, hope that he comes through the door in the morning, only to find out that there had been a three alarm fire and that he was in a blazing inferno on a third floor. Fire is all throughout the building, including the basement here and in the attic. The second floor tenant came to us and said, the guy on the third floor is still up there. Let's see if we can get in there. We got to the third floor, uh, we broke in two doors, and I went left and I crawled into a side bedroom. And it was one of the only rooms in the whole house that didn't have any fire in it. And I crawled right into this guy, he was curled up on the floor. So I grabbed him, I dragged him out through the kitchen, I was yelling for Bob. I said, Bob, I got him, let's get out of here. This is the aftermath. This is the photograph that was in the paper the next day. There's a guy walking around today because of uh, you know, being able to do our job. And so I worked there for almost 24 years. But I could see the end of my career. I had three or four years to go to retirement anyway. So I figured this was the perfect time for me to progress through the ranks. We went away on this great vacation up in Maine, and a week later I was at home and I got a phone call from my doctor. And she said, Paul, I'm looking over the results of your blood work and your PSA is up, slightly elevated from past exams. Could be nothing, you might want to get that checked. Just a month after coming back from vacation, and we just didn't expect anything other than, yeah, it's nothing, because Paul was so healthy, such a strong firefighter, was always working out in the gym. So I automatically thought, oh, well, this is going to be fine. Nothing's going to be wrong here at all. Phew, we dodged this one because we had known a lot about firefighter cancer. All of a sudden, the doctor says, yep, it's cancer. I screamed and literally fell down into a chair. But it destroyed him, knowing that he wasn't going back. As he began to slip further and further away from me, I just had to find out why how this happens to somebody so healthy, you know. There's a dialogue that has been promulgated for over 20 years that firefighter cancer is only from toxic smoke or, or from diesel exhaust. There was something more going on. And I just kept hearing, you know, keep looking, keep looking. The rabbit hole began after finding the gear degrading in the groin area of Paul's own turnout gear. I started really reaching out to anybody that might know, scientists, firefighters, why was the gear degrading? And PFAS wasn't even on our mind at that time. But I began to put two and two together, how this could happen, the, the gear could degrade and you know make my husband and other firefighters susceptible to these toxins. 
And one day, out of the clear blue, I got a phone call and didn't recognize the number. And she said, I'm calling you today because I got a call from a New Hampshire fire chief. He has 13 firefighters with cancer. She then asked, does the fabric contain PFOA or PFOS? And I had never heard of these things. They were foreign to me. Went right onto the computer and it took minutes to find that in Europe, European Chemical Agency had already begun transitioning to non-PFOA PPE. Then I said, well, then their gear has this stuff in it. I started messaging people, do you think our gear has this stuff? This is a known carcinogen. Rob was probably the fifth or sixth attorney that I reached out to. I think I emailed him maybe 160 times. The lawyer who became DuPont's worst nightmare. DuPont's worst nightmare, and that's Rob Bulat. We're talking about a community that came together and started speaking out and saying, we're not going to put up with this. We had been fighting back and forth with DuPont about what their documents were showing. We had found documents, all of their own studies, that were showing all of these toxic effects in animals, including cancer. Not only had there been the cancer study I mentioned in the 1980s that found testicular tumors in rats, there had been a second study had found not only testicular tumors, but liver and pancreatic tumors. And DuPont itself classified the chemical as a confirmed animal carcinogen. So it was toxic, persistent, and bioaccumulative. In Rob Ballant's book, Exposure, they knew that PFOA could permeate all protective materials eventually. So all gloves had to be disposed after use. Workers with inhalation exposure were advised to wear respirators and protective masks. I had reached out to the corporations and I couldn't get an answer from them if our gear had this material in it. And they said if it was in it, it would only be trace amounts and it would be there as a byproduct of manufacturing. But I couldn't find anything here in America that said that those chemicals were in our gear. Anything that has anything to do with the fire service, you're going to see it on the fire service media sites. One of those was Station Pride. I had asked the editor, John Marr, if he would publish an article that I had written to help tell our story about what we were finding. And he titled it, The Real Cancer in Your Gear. It went viral. We saw it shared thousands and thousands of times, but nobody would comment because they were just shocked. I think they were saying, this is really bullshit. We were getting so much pushback from my accusations from the FIA community. I said, I'm going to find out myself. I asked on social media, does anyone have new never worn turnout gear that I could buy? We had our own scientists and they advised me to speak to Graham Peasley. I got an email from Diane Carter. Here's the spouse of a firefighter who writes me and says she thinks PFAS is being used in their gear. And it's the first I'd heard of it. And I said, can you send me a sample of the gear? I'd be happy to test it and see if there's PFAS in it. This is the actual coat where samples were taken and sent to Dr. Peasley. So he told me how to prepare the samples, which I did. He sent me five anonymized pieces of fabric. I saw some of the largest levels of fluorine I'd ever seen in this textile. And it was remarkably high. And I said, wow, that's not just fluorinated, it's heavily fluorinated. He then replied in email to me that yes, the gear did have these chemicals and uh, it had it in staggering amounts. And he said, oh no, there's, there's much more than trace amounts in, in these textiles. Graham said, you may want to do a larger study. What we needed was gear and money. I had heard about Last Call Foundation honoring firefighter Michael Kennedy. I thought if I reach out to Kathy and tell her about this, maybe she'll help. It was believed for a very long time that cardiac issues were the main killer of firefighters. But over a period, it became clear that cancer had overtaken that. Diane Cotter approached me. She explained to me what had happened to Paul 
and why she believed that fluorinated chemicals had played a, a large role in that. And, you know, I mulled it over, took it to my board, and they all said the same thing. You know what? If it's possible, we should be looking into it. Our underground operation achieved what the fire service institutions had never been able to do. It's always passed off as a given. Well, you're going to get cancer. Um, people accept it. This is where I spent most of my career downtown here, in the Central Division. The flags of half staff now, in memory of the six killed in the warehouse fire. Yeah, I was forced to retire. It wasn't it wasn't what I wanted. It wasn't what I was hoping for. I worked with all of these guys year down. As far as the risks, you're, you're told that the smoke is toxic. So the, the, the risks, they tell you are from the smoke, the products of combustion, all the dangerous chemicals that are given off. That's what we're told. Our furniture, our furnishings, all of them are treated with chemicals. The reality is whenever those chemicals are exposed to, to fire, they off-gas carcinogens. 19 out of 31 firefighters that worked in this house have been diagnosed with cancer. When I was home recovering from my surgery, I got a call one day, and it was a brother firefighter who had just been diagnosed with prostate cancer. And he asked me, what do I do? And I explained to him uh, the process and what happens. And <clears throat> about a month later, I got a second call, and there are two columns here, and it goes on to the next page, and I have 44 names so far on my list from 2015 on, and I continue to get calls to this day. Uh, brother firefighters diagnosed with cancer, wondering what to do next. So I think it's, it's important to highlight the type of cancer Lots of kidneys, lots of bladder, also testicular. And we know in animal studies that uh, those are the leading cancers from PFAS. But I was horrified when slightly more than a month into the research that was supposed to take more than a year, I believe it was initially set for 18 months, he called us and said, we need to stop the study. We need to tell firefighters. What Diane did took a lot of personal bravery because she could be laughed out of the room, and she was several times when she tried to tell this to people. I was being contacted by firefighters who wanted to know what I knew. One of those was Jason Burns. When fire broke out at this Fall River apartment complex, firefighter Jason Burns wasn't at work. In my profession, I'm supposed to take care of other people. I do take care of other people. Burns says more than 100 firefighters were at this scene over the course of two days. We're not always good at taking care of each other. And now we're starting to see firefighters who are getting diagnosed with cancer in their 20s, their 30s, and their 40s. I'm telling you, as a young pretty involved union president. I went to these educational seminars. I went to these symposiums. I went to every state meeting. I paid attention to what was going on. Gear was never brought up. The manufacturers have taken it upon themselves to produce their own science. And that study said that there was not enough uh, PFAS in firefighter turnout gear to be concerned about. Lion does not use PFOA or PFOS in our turnout gear or any of our protective products. The IAFF has reviewed the science and stated it is unlikely that PFOA is present in any significant concentrations.
When Schaefberger was uh, president of the IAFF, they put out a letter that basically denied that there was any uh, substance to this claim that the PFAS in, in the bunker gear was substantial and dangerous. And there was debate as, you know, whether or not those carcinogens posed a true health risk or not. And that's the study that was read to the fire service. And all of this, again, is dedicated toward our members living. I don't want to be dramatic, but they're dying, and they're dying younger and younger from cancers. Her voracious advocacy, which I applaud, was a threat to some of the powers that be, and in particular, the corporate interests that probably have some exposure here. The cancer symposium that was sponsored by these companies who are providing a product which is getting our members sick. I'd like to start by, first of all, thanking our sponsors. Uh, Tenkata, uh, W.L. Gore, Globe MSA, DuPont. Uh, they, really, uh, they really came to the table. Please, everybody, uh, appreciation for our sponsors for our first cancer summit. You know, I feel bad that she had to go through everything she went through. We've had to undo a lot of damage to help firefighters understand that Graham Peasley's study is a peer-reviewed study with no conflicts of interest. We had to test which chemicals were there. The PFAS in the coating is to keep them waterproof. So keeping them dry is essential, but you don't have to use PFAS to keep yourself dry. And the companies then insisted they didn't use it, which was pretty easy to prove that they did. And so we do our test for free, but then we sent it out to a commercial lab. And they allowed me to get this high quality data back that showed which specific PFAS. And uh, the combination of the two made for this paper that we published last year. Still nobody had reported this, and I was a little bit afraid to be the only one to report it. In here, Dr. Peasley found that there was enough PFAS in 10-year-old gear to still meet the NFPA requirements. But we also learned about the new materials using the PFBS. See that amount right there? It almost looks like a typo, doesn't it? This is one of our fabric samples. This happens to be Tenkata. And what you'll see here is the outer shell material, but keep in mind that we know that they're treated in the amounts that Graham has told us, which are staggering, so we'll care for ourselves afterwards. One of the first things, obviously, we wanted our union to stand up and say, listen, health and safety first of our members. We got a problem on our hands. It's going on around the entire country. Firefighters are, are dealing with cancer at rates that we've never seen. I've looked at too many widows, Looked at too many fatherless children. I've had enough. I'm willing to fight. I'm not going to tolerate, you know, this this carcinogen in my gear forever just because it's not profits over people. We will prevail. Thank you for being a champion that you've been. You don't cower in the face of adversity. And speaking truth to power isn't free. For many years, we thought. Our cancer was driven by the smoke, off gases from burning combustibles, building debris. We thought that's what was making us sick. Now, we know our own gear is part of that problem. The very thing that's supposed to be keeping us safe is costing us our lives. We would not know that were it not for the firefighter's hero Diane Carter. As your protectors in society, firefighters need better protective equipment than that which makes us sick. The problem we have is that gear doesn't currently exist. There's no fully PFAS free option on the market and we're fighting to change that. But it's not just bunker gear, as we all know, PFAS is found all throughout society. And most disgustingly, in the drinking water that we all consume, including our children. The oath we took 
was to protect all of you. And our fight is to save the lives of everybody. We owe it to ourselves to be able to look in the mirror, rest our head on a pillow at night, knowing that we are gonna stand up to fight for this change. We're working with the federal government to get funding to replace all of it. PFAS, the so-called forever chemicals that for years have been in your gear, your equipment and the suppression agents that you depend on to do your job. I'm determined, I'm absolutely determined to make sure you have the gear to protect you without making you or your family sick. Cancer is a leading killer of firefighters. Toxic substances you've been exposed to as part of your job are almost certainly, certainly connected to those cancer diagnoses. You're going to have a bunch of academics here that will try to relate what you live in to what we see in the lab, and it's hard to do. Um, but I think it's important because you can understand this. Look at all the self-taught people in this room that understand what the hazards of PFAS are. From 1962, there are internal documents showing some concerns with health effects in the population. There's lots of evidence now that uh, industry knew a lot sooner than 1998, but they are all, all, and I have to state this, are environmentally persistent. They're all products of industrial synthesis. And in fact, they are released, into, as we've heard, into the air, into the water, and they get into all of us as well. You know. Every one of us in this room has PFAS in our body. I'm angry. Six weeks after I took office as president of Local 1314, I was burying a childhood friend of mine. That was cancer. That was Paul Chippendale. We didn't know what to think of it. It made us all sad, uh, and we dealt with it. I almost took it as a one-off, and I'm not taken away from the loss of Paul. It was a tremendous loss for our department. Two years later, I was burying Adam Franco, 32 years old, brain cancer. He had a son, I think was one, maybe just under one. And something clicked up here. I told you before, the job of a president is to protect his membership. It's not to respond to problems, right? You've got to be ahead of the problems. You've got to protect them. You've got to save them from that. The answer that I found, it never should have happened this way. But I had a fire wife on social media, yelling, you know, it was all caps, that's yelling, right? For pleading for someone to listen to her. That was Diane Carter. She said, you gotta look at your gear. Little did I know, little did we know, little did the fire service know that our personal protective equipment was saturated with PFAS. From being told that people in labs, labs are not allowed to touch my gear unless they are appropriately protected. Now connect the dots. I got a 37-year-old kid that's dead. I got a 32-year-old kid that's dead. Numerous firefighters are dying out there. I'm telling you right now, the cancer epidemic is running through the fire service, whether you know it or not. From 2002 to 2019, I might be off a year either way, 66% of line of duty deaths are occupational cancer. I didn't get a warning. I didn't get a warning label. I didn't get an advisory. I didn't get a safety bulletin. I didn't get anything. I put my kids in, in my coat. took a picture. It's cute. Do you think I would have done that if I had an advisory? Do you think I would have done that if I would have known that people in lab scientists who work with my equipment, do you think I would have done that if I had known that they won't even touch it? My God, no. Think of the damage that was done. It horrifies me. Thank you, I appreciate it. Keep doing what you're doing. You're making my firefighters' lives a lot safer. I appreciate it, thank you. Hey everybody, uh, I'm Mark Ruffalo. 
and I've been involved in a movie called Dark Waters, and it tells a story of a lawyer who uncovers how these chemicals were put into the environment and how we have all been unwittingly poisoned by them. Your protective wear is also a wash in these forever chemicals, both on the outside and the inside because of their water repelling qualities. These chemicals enter our bodies very easily. And it's not fair that you are literally encapsulated in these chemicals every single day, every moment you do your job. And so there's a movement to bring safety to the people who bring us safety, you. And so I would ask you to open your hearts and your minds to what this film is, is trying to tell you. I hope that this has changed and that you are as valued for you being human beings as you are for your ability to keep us safe. Thank you. We're really hoping to reduce the cancer rate in the fire service. That is paramount. Firefighters need to be able to live past retirement age. Our goal is to have cancer-free PPE. We need a new bunker gear technology that will protect us without getting us sick. Wear the gear to a fire. Do not wear the gear for around the firehouse. Don't wear it for any other reason. And for God's sakes, keep your kids away from it. If we educate people about what could be changed, then people do it, uh, for the most part. Um, and then legislation. And this is, this is a really important one. We gotta rely on our allies and, and government. We need to make sure PFAS is out of our gear. We need to make sure that it's not anywhere, right? The whole planet now has these chemicals in their blood. We shouldn't have to do what we did for the community in West Virginia and Ohio dealing with one of those chemicals, PFOA, now that we know that we're exposed to all of these other PFOS chemicals. We should, there should be a way to make sure that the companies that continue to manufacture these, knowing they will get out into our environment, they will get into our drinking water, they will get into us, they should have to pay. Trust me. The corporations that have shareholder value, they would love nothing more than for you to curl up and die. And we're certainly not gonna do that. My name is Captain Richard Burt. I'm a retired firefighter paramedic from Las Vegas Fire and Rescue, and I spent 30 years as a firefighter. I want to start out by thanking my dear friend Mark Ruffalo for working on this project and bringing this to my attention. There are three things you can do today to protect yourself. Number one, get out of your turnout gear. Only wear your gear on an emergency call. Number two, when you're not wearing your turnout gear, put it in a container with a lid. And number three, if you have to wear your turnout gear, fill out an exposure report form every time. Let's use this knowledge, protect ourselves, and be safe.